child. Amen. Now, the Bible tells us that Zachariah's wife, Elizabeth, was a woman who was committed to God. As a matter of fact, not only was she committed to God, but look what verse 6 says. Verse 6 says, and they were both righteous before God, walking in all the commandments and the ordinances of the Lord blameless. Let me share something with you. If you are not married, but you're planning on getting married, don't marry somebody that's not committed to God. Oh, can I get an amen, somebody? If you are married, and the person that you are married to is a person that is committed to God, you ought to clap your hands and give God some praise for it. Oh, that was weak there, wasn't it? Can I get an amen, somebody? If you're married to somebody that is not committed to God, then you need to be praying that God will draw them into a deeper and closer relationship with him. Why? Because if a person is not committed to God, ain't no way in the world they're going to be committed to you. Amen. Oh, can I get an amen? Can somebody shout glory? So Zachariah said, listen, committed believers. And the Bible tells us something. Not only were they committed, but it was while Zachariah was taking care of of his responsibilities in temple worship or service that the Lord showed up in his life. I have found in reading the Bible, what me, rarely does God show up for people who ain't doing nothing. Y'all miss that. In other words, lazy people do not get God's attention. Oh, can I get an amen, somebody? Touch your neighbor, tell them, don't be lazy. As a matter of fact, 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verse 10, when Paul was writing to the church at Thessalonica, reporting come to him that there were folks sitting around doing nothing, just looking for other folk to take care of them. And Paul says this, if you don't work, you don't eat. Oh, can I get an amen, somebody? Look at somebody next to you, tell them, I need my meal. Oh, somebody ought to bless the Lord with a great big hand praise right now. Somebody shout glory. Well, Zacharias was busy doing what God, what he was supposed to be doing, and the angel shows up in Zacharias' life. It is what happens with Zacharias that causes me to praise God and say thank you. Thank you that you bless me not because of Oh, I will thank you because you blessed me in spite of you. When the angel shows up to Zechariah, he has tremendous news for him. He says, Zechariah, your prayer, the one you've been praying all of these years, has been heard. Say amen, somebody. Now, you will think that Zechariah will be so excited that he would say, thank you, Lord. But listen what happened. Verse 12. Verse 12 says that when Zechariah saw him, he was troubled and fear came upon him. Zechariah teaches me that many times God blesses me in spite of how I react to him. Notice Zechariah's inward reaction. First thing it tells us that when the angel appeared, because of his presence, Zechariah was troubled. Now understand, he was in the temple, doing what he was supposed to do, and all of a sudden, here an angel appears, caught him totally off guard, completely by surprise. Agitation of mind, agitation of spirit. Can I get an amen, somebody? Let me read you some of these things. To agitate.
agitate, to cause one inward commotion, to take away your calmness of mind, to disturb your equanimity, to disquiet, to make you restless, to strike one's spirit with fear and dread, to render one anxious or distressed, to perplex the mind of one by suggesting scruples or doubts. Now, I would love to just ascribe that to Zechariah, but I declare, every time I've been called on God, my mind just went crazy. Oh, come on. Y'all don't know what I'm talking about? Let me share one with you. This past week, riding along in the car, and with the mess of my journey for the window to go up, and I heard it go, <laughs> and it went almost all the way up. So I let it back down, hit it again, and it went halfway up. So Rebel Smalls came over, and we grabbed the window, and we turned. Put y'all on them, y'all. Anybody ever had a window stuck? Try to pull the window up. Well, while I was driving the shade, window started dropping some more. So every time it dropped, I get out and try to pull it back up. Until finally, Brother Jackson, it just dropped. Boom! And it wouldn't go back up anymore. Now, some of y'all know Tuesday, it was pouring out rain. Now, I had plastic on it. But I couldn't see. <laughs> so I had to pull a plastic off. And I'm riding the rain just zoom, zoom, all in my face. Can I get it? Y'all know what I'm talking. Can I get an amen, somebody? So I pull in to the Midas folk. So they right down the street from I figured, pull that pull the window up, set it back on this track. Minimum cost, praise the Lord. <laughs>
in power? How do I walk in love? How do I walk in soundness of mind? Well, Isaiah chapter 26, verse 3 gives us the key. In Isaiah 26, 3, God says this, Thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. Rather than thinking about my financial difficulties, I keep my mind on the Lord. Rather than thinking about my health problems, I keep my mind on the Lord. Rather than grow, rather than going crazy about my marital problems, I keep my mind on the Lord. Rather than losing it, trying to raise the children, I keep my mind on the Lord. If I don't keep my mind, We start looking at what we're able to 
do. When the blessings of God are not based on what you can do, the blessings of God are based on what he can do. And so what does Zechariah do? Look at verse 18. Verse 18 says, And Zechariah said unto the angel, Whereby shall I know this? For I am an old man, and my wife is well stricken in years. Look at, instead of looking at God, he's looking at himself, at what his body is able to produce, at what he can do. And he says, I am an old man. And then, ladies, did you hear what he said next? <laughs> ladies, see, if y'all understood where I'm coming from, y'all would say, the audacity of him. <laughs> ladies, did you hear what he said next? Look at it. I'm an old man. My wife, well, stricken in years. He said, I'm old. And my wife, way too old. <laughs> Jesus goes back to his hometown Nazareth. 
He's been giving sight to the blind, causing the lame to walk, the deaf to hear, the dumb to speak, raising people from the dead. And yet when he gets back home, notice what happened there. And he did not many mighty works there because of their unbelief. Unbelief can keep you from seeing God work miracles in your life. Unbelief can hinder you from the opportunity of seeing God do something great in your life. Anybody need God to do something great for you? Touch your name and tell them, believe God. Unbelief can hold up your blessing. Or, as in the case of Zechariah, Unbelief can cause you to go through stuff you ordinarily wouldn't have to go through. Yes. Are you hearing me? Yes. Because unbelief will cause you to do it your way uh -huh. instead of God's way. Uh -huh. And God said, take my yoke upon you and learn from me for my yoke is easy and my burdens of life. See, when you don't do it God's way, that means you got to try to work it your way and you got to deal with all that comes with trying to work it your way. You gotta deal with the folk. You gotta deal with the issues. You gotta deal with the problems. You gotta deal with these circumstances that you would have to deal with if you did it God's way. Anybody wanna do it God's way? Somebody shout glory. Let me throw this at you. There was a man by the name of Abel. God promised him that he would have a son. And he was going to have the son by his old wife, say amen somebody, amen. named Sarah. When Abram was 86 and Sarah was 76, they came up with a plan, said it ain't happened yet. Maybe we better do this, help God out. And so they gave him Sarah's handmaiden, Hagar. He had a relationship with Hagar and had a son by Hagar named Ishmael. Somebody shout Ishmael. God stepped in and said, no, that was not my plan. My plan is that despite the deadness of your body, I'm going to work a miracle and bless you and Sarah with a son. Somebody shout glory. I'm going somewhere with this. So Sarah has a son when she's 90, and they name him Isaac. Isaac and Ishmael growing up together. Isaac is about um, Ishmael is about 13 years older than Isaac, and so they put Isaac out of the camp. These boys, this began a struggle between those boys and their descendants. And because they did it their way, rather than God's way, 4,000 years later, we're still dealing with that issue. Yeah. Are y'all miss me? You're saying how? Because Ishmael is the father of the Palestinians, and Isaac is the father of the Israelites, and right now, 2,000 
for the wages of sin is death. And so something happened, consequences had to be paid. Zachariah, for nine months, you will not be able to talk. But even though he wouldn't be able to talk for nine months, God didn't take the blessing away from him. He still had a son. And at the end of nine months, his mouth was loose and he was still able to praise God. And all I try to say this morning, if this Christmas season, if we don't do anything else, let's learn to praise God for the fact that he blesses us in spite of Some of 